I have always thought that one of the hardest things in chess is knowing what to calculate. Sometimes I'll look at a position and I'll be like, should I move my queenside pawns or should I defend my king or should I attack my opponent's king? And I sometimes get so overwhelmed that I'll just spend so much time without really getting any plan and at the end just losing on time. If that resonates with you guys, then today's video hopefully will be very helpful in figuring out a good system for how to place your thoughts when it comes to calculating in chess. This is what I was taught when I was a little kid and my parents were teaching me how to play chess. And this is the, the, the advice that I want to give to you guys. You should first calculate all checks in a position, even the most stupid ones, because there might be a hidden tactic. Then you should calculate all captures in a position. And after that, all the attacks that you have. And those attacks could be something like a fork or, you know, threatening to do a fork or, um, you know, threatening to do a certain check, any sort of threat. The reason why I think this calculation method is so good is because it makes you see all the forcing moves in a position. Okay, so what I'm going to do is that I'll be playing a 10 minute game, which will give me enough time to talk through my moves and tell you exactly how my thought process is. So typically in the opening, what you want to do is that you want to know kind of what you're doing just to save time over here. I would say, though, that if you're under uh, 1200, you definitely should not focus on theory or anything. You should definitely focus on, you know, tactics or um, other parts of the game. But I think that just learning a few moves in the opening when you're when you're starting uh, helps you at least uh, feel a little bit more comfortable uh, when you're starting a game of chess. So I'm right now I'm going to be playing. Let's see, I'm going to go D5. I'm just going to play a queen's gambit declined and I'll probably set up my my position into uh, into a little little triangle, <laughs> the little triangle slab. Um, so yes, yeah, so right now I'm not really thinking a lot. Okay, so my opponent went bishop f4. So this sort of, I mean, this is the London bishop basically, bishop looking towards c7. What I'll do is that I will go, I was thinking of going c6. You know what, I'll go c6, just like I was thinking. But right now I'm not really thinking a lot about calculating. This is not the point of the game where I want to calculate. This is just the part of the point of the game where I want to develop my pieces. So because I sort of know what I'm doing, I know what squares I want to put my pieces to. I know my bishop should go to e7. I know that, you know, now that my pawn is over here, okay, my knight needs to go over here. I know basically what I'm, where I'm putting my pieces and therefore I don't need to spend time here and I can just focus on developing and not on calculating or anything. So definitely, I think that's something that I haven't said yet in the video, but Calculating is something that you should do in the middle game and end game. Generally, not in the opening, at least unless like your opponent like plays something very, 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 very random. But um, I feel like it's always good to develop all your pieces before you do that because the more pieces that you have developed, the more you know you'll be able to bring those pieces into uh, any sort of attack or anything. So yeah, but obviously, like if your opponent is threatening one of your pieces or something like that, you know, you should you should be thinking about this. Um, but yeah, I mean, right now there's not really any checks. The only capture that there is at this point is going uh, knight takes or bishop takes here, which I know is not good yet. Although I'm actually now that I'm thinking about it, just because I started thinking about it, I realized that I can actually maybe set up a trap for my opponent, which is that I can maybe go h6. The idea being very sneaky that if I go bishop takes, pawn takes, then e5 would be trapping the bishop, which is what's happening right now. It's just that now I've realized that after this and this, the bishop might go here. I will be getting my bishop back, but then my opponent will be getting an open file. But you see, guys, I was literally telling you, do you know, don't you don't need to do this in the opening. But the moment I started to actually look through the captures i realized wait there might be a tactic in this position and all of a sudden i see the position in a different way like okay this sounds like so deep but um i see the position in a different way because i see that there's actually all these tactics because my this bishop 
doesn't have that many squares that it can retreat to as my opponent has put all their pawns on dark squares. So I'm choosing right now to not really do anything about it, but I'm keeping this in mind. Now I need to develop my light squared bishop. This is the last piece that I need to develop, but I'm trying to think about uh, a good way of doing it. You know, my all of my pawns are in light squares. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go b6 to try to develop it through either b7 or a6. I'm just going to try to put it somewhere over here. So in this position, I can tell that this bishop is my bad one because all my pawns are in light squares. And this one is my good one because once again, my pawns are in light squares, which means that this bishop has more movement. Okay, now more things are happening in the game. All right, now we're at move 10. All right, you know, almost all my pieces have been developed and now all of a sudden my, my opponent is going g4 and my opponent is going to go for an attack. So this is the moment where I need to start calculating. Okay, Anna. So do I have any checks in this position? No, there's not a single check. Do I have any captures? I can capture on g4, but that would not really lead me to anything because I would just be losing a piece. So that is a bad move. And I can also capture on c5 with my knight, my bishop and my pawn. Okay, with these two, I will lose a piece because my opponent will just capture. So what happens if I take with the pawn? Okay, if I take with the pawn, if my opponent takes back, then I'll be able to uh, take, take this with my knight and I will win a pawn, but then my opponent will go g5. Okay, I need to do some calculation here. What happens if I take here and my opponent goes g5 immediately? This is a pretty scary move that I'm seeing right now because... By going g5, my opponent will be able to exchange this pawn for one of my pawns in front of the king. And as we all know, the pawns in front of the king are the most, well, I mean, not the most important ones, but your king is your most important piece in the sense that if you lose it, you lose the game. So I don't want to lose my defense in front of the king. I'm kind of worried about it. Um, so I'm going to try to figure out a good way of stopping this. So what I am realizing right now is that I will let my opponent go g5. But that is only because I have realized that after g5, I will be able to move my knight somewhere. And when my opponent takes this, then I'll be able to block. OK, I know this is a little bit maybe complicated. Um, but I've started, you know, looking at all these captures. And I'm seeing my opponent's attack. I'm looking at, at the attacks in this position. But I'm coming to a conclusion that I'm not scared of g5. So I'm going to go ahead and take on c5, which was the initial capture that I wanted to take, that I wanted to do. And now my opponent is going g5, just like I predicted. Now, I definitely do not want to take this pawn in g5 because then my whole h file is going to get open. And then it's very easy that my opponent will checkmate me. So I will go ahead and uh, let my opponent take my pawn and I will just try to block the whole position. I'm going knight h7, I'm going back over here because my knight doesn't really have any other good retreat squares. If I go knight e8, well, then my knight will be blocking my rook and my queen, which I don't really want. So, And now there's a really good theme to remember. Now that my opponent's taking on h6, I'm going to go g6, okay? I analyzed in my brain very quickly what happens if I take over here. But I immediately didn't like it because I realized that um, what's going to happen is that my, 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 this file over here is going to get open. So actually right now, this pawn right here is helping me guard my king. My opponent's pawn is helping me guard my king right now. Okay, this is right now still a pretty complicated position. What I'm going to do, once again, no checks. Okay, what are the captures? There is this capture. You know what? I actually quite like it because I am going to be now a pawn up. And as long as I am not getting checkmated, I will just stay a pawn up. So if the queen takes back here, then what I'll be able to do is that, okay, there's no checks, there's no captures. But what attacks will I have? Okay, I will have bishop f6 and I'll be able to place my bishop on this beautiful diagonal. I'm attacking the queen, uh, but... um. But most importantly, I'll be placing my bishop in this in this beautiful diagonal. But why do I think about this move? Okay, because I'm thinking about how to attack my opponent. So I'm thinking right now, okay, I can attack this piece, for instance. Why did I choose to go here and not to go to c5? Because I want to put this bishop on a long diagonal. Because my bishop will thrive here. My bishop will have a lot more movement here than it would have had on c5, where this pawn would block it. So... Let's go ahead and see where this queen goes. Now, we also need to keep in mind that after a queen moves somewhere, I will have this capture. 
I need to think, okay, do I want to capture this knight? Truth is that I don't because if I do, I'll lose my beautiful bishop. And this bishop, I believe, is better than this knight as this knight doesn't really have any good squares to go to. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to think about checks, no checks, captures. I don't like this capture. Attacks. What other attacks do I have? Okay, I can go knight c5. I'm attacking the queen and I like this attack because I'm bringing another piece to the center of the board and I'm threatening the queen. So basically, I'm forcing my opponent to make a move now. So the queen goes back to d2. Okay, queen goes back to d2. And now, once again, I don't like this capture. There isn't, well, there's also this capture on h4, but that just loses a piece. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do an attack. What attacks do I have? What attacks do I have? I could maybe go, yeah, what attacks do I have? Maybe I could go e5 to maybe go d4, but I don't really like this because I'm blocking my bishop. But one attack that I really like is moving this bishop to a6 because I'm threatening to go knight d3 check and I'm also developing the last piece that I wanted to develop. Now, all my minor pieces are developed, all my knights and my bishops. I only need to get my queen and my rooks, you know, into the system working and now it'll be great. Okay, now I actually have a check, all right? I did have this check before, but okay, I was losing a piece, but now I have this check, knight d3 check, and I created, I went bishop a6, developing this piece, but also creating this knight d3 check attack. This is an attack. Why is it an attack? Because after I go here, I'm stopping my opponent from castling. My opponent now, after this check, will not be able to castle because the king has to move somewhere. And after you moved your king once, you cannot castle. And, you know, my opponent doesn't want to take the knight. So let's see where... Whoops, I'm not going to pre-move that. <laughs> Guys, make sure to not have your pre-moves. Uh, well, you should have your pre-moves on when you're playing Blitz, but that was very scary. Okay, so... King d1. All right, so now I need to think again. What checks do I have? I can go check over here, but queen takes and I lose a piece. So I'm not a fan of that. But um, what other captures do I have? Okay, I can take this. I can take this, but I don't like any of those moves because I'll just be exchanging uh, good material for bad. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create another threat. I'm going to go queen b6, and I'm going to be threatening to take this pawn on b3. Now... I'm just trying to get my pieces out and threaten pieces, okay, and threaten my opponent's position. Now, if, my pa if this pawn goes to b3, we can see that this bishop on f6 will be even stronger because now this pawn will not be defending the knight anymore. So, okay, my opponent decides to move the knight instead, okay? So, now I have a few different options, but what I will do is that I will create the same threats as I did before, but I will go queen b5 and threaten this knight at the same time. All right. Did I have knight takes b2 check winning a pawn? I probably did. And this is what happens when I get a little bit low on time and I don't go through the checks, captures and attacks. This is why, everybody, you should always go through checks, captures and attacks. I believe that maybe knight takes here was the best move in the position and I missed it. So, guys, this once again, I should have gone. You know, guys, it's so easy to forget about the stuff that you're talking about and following your own method. But um, anyways, now I'll remember Checks, captures, and attacks. Anna, what checks do you have? You have this one. Terrible check. You lose a piece. You have this one. Not a terrible check. Why? Because the queen is defending this. If the queen takes, you can take it back. Okay, you're checking. The king has to move somewhere, and you're going to be getting a whole pawn. So let's see where the king ends up going. Let's see where the king ends up going. If the king goes to c1, maybe I have another check. If the king goes to b2, or sorry, if the king goes to c2, then maybe I can go queen b4 and put some extra pressure on this knight. I will have two pieces, you know, threatening it. And I will also be threatening bishop d3 check. Lots of attacks going on. But once again, checks, captures, and attacks. Okay, here we go. So what other checks will I have? I'm just thinking about it right now. I only have two minutes in my time. So I'm just really trying to think right now what checks will I have. Um... So after king here, okay, I will have this check. Once again, checks, captures, and attacks. The first check that comes to mind is knight over here. Queen here just loses a queen. Any other check? I can't see it. Okay, captures, I have this. I still don't like it. I'm going to go for the check. All right, let's see where the king goes now. If the king goes here, then I have maybe queen b2 check, and that will really be a check to consider. So the king goes back. Okay, so now is the time to think checks. I have this check, but then the king will just be able to come back. 
have this one, but we already know I don't like it. I have captures, which could be to take this. I could take this knight, and then I could check, because then I'll be taking out this defender, and my queen and my bishop will be working really well together. But I kind of have the feeling... Do I? I'm thinking if I want to attack the piece instead. So queen here, knight probably has to move. Knight check, king here. Okay, I'm going to go for this. I believe that this attack is better than getting rid of my bishop because I believe that my bishop is really strong right now. Also now, now I realize that the knight moves, I'll be able to take in the rook. Um, so yeah, um, my gut feeling was right. I just want to attack a piece. I just realized I was trying to go too much for like some sort of checkmate, but there is no checkmate. So queen c4, I decided to go for an attack because I didn't like the capture. I'm going for an attack. I'm threatening this knight. And now when the knight goes somewhere, I'll be able to take the rook. And there's no way for, uh, for, there's no way for, for the rook to defend without getting lost. The queen is already defending, but I have two attackers. And if the king goes ahead and tries to defend, then I will have a check, a really nice check. And if the king goes to the same diagonal as my bishop, well, then that just feels like it has to be really bad. So my opponent is going bishop f1 to put some pressure on this knight. But there is nothing. I can just take on c3 with my queen. And um, my bishop is defending this knight beautifully. So now I'm taking this piece with my queen. Um, it was, uh, we've already covered the checks. There was this capture and this capture already looked good. So I went for it. So now when the queen takes back, I'll be able to take it back and I'll be threatening this rook at the same time as everything is defended. So my bishops are now going to be amazing. They're going to be doing wonders in this game. Hopefully. So, um, uh, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and see what my opponent chooses to do. There's not really a lot of things that my opponent can do. Maybe my opponent can go something like rook b1. And to be honest, I really wish I could get my rooks into the game, but I can't really do it because this bishop is stopping me. So that's a little bit annoying, but I think my bishops are very annoying too. So, okay, the rook probably has to go to b1 and then I'll be starting to analyze the checks again uh, because, you know, it's, it's time now to analyze the checks. The, the position has changed and when a position changes, you need to see it with a new set of eyes. So um, I am a piece up, so I'm feeling good about that. But like I said, I need to I need to see this position from a new perspective. OK, my opponent just blundered a rook. And because I'm seeing this through the checks, captures and attacks, immediately I'm analyzing the capture. A capture is to take the rook. I like it. I'm a rook up. There's nothing that my opponent can do. I'll take the rook. I'll take it and I'll say thank you. So um, I don't really need to analyze any attacks because taking the rook is just better. OK, my, my opponent's king is now going over here. Uh, there's a threat right now on this knight and if I move the knight and I'm not careful I might lose my bishop because the bishop is attacking this so checks captures and attacks I see that this check um, is both checking but also defending this bishop so I'm gonna go for this check I'll go ahead and take over here before anything else because I'm scared of losing my uh, my bishop and um, right now I have to make a choice I will have to lose this one because um Otherwise, I mean, I can't keep both of my pieces, but I'll still be a lot of material up. I believe I couldn't keep both my bishop and my knight. I may be mistaken, but I don't think so. So I'm going to go knight over here because now there's no attack anymore. The queens are exchanged and now it's time for me to, I'm just going to play this pretty fast just to, you know, uh, just to get this going. But at this point, basically, I just want to get all my pieces in. I want to exchange as much as possible because I am a lot of uh, material up. So what I will do is that I will just go ahead and go knight up, threatening my bishop. This knight, I'm um, getting it now into the game because as the queens are exchanged, there's no more attack. I'm going to have to play very fast now. So I'm, I'm going to try to cover everything that I'm doing as good as I can. But right now I'm threatening this bishop. The bishop will have to move somewhere and I already know that I want to attack it. Okay, this is a free pawn. I'll take it. I'm not scared of this being opened up anymore. Takes and takes and I'll put the rook on b8 because I want to create as many discovered checks as possible. I want to put my rook in the same file as the king. So I'm going to go knight back over here and now I'll just try to go for some checks. Okay guys, now we're very low on time. <laughs> um, I have 15 seconds. My opponent has one and a half minute. 
So, like I said, I'm going to have to go very, 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 very fast. Okay, we're going to go for a check. I see immediately that if king takes here, I have a fork and I'm winning the rook. There we go. I'm doing this in super extra speed right now. But um, I'm now for the simplicity, for sake of simpli simplifying things. I'm just going to hope that my the knight takes the rook just because it's going to be easier to just play with the rook. I'm going to go ahead and do a few pre-moves over here like this check. And then I'm just going to go back all the way over here just to take the uh, remaining pieces. So simplest way right now of playing this is simply by promoting this last pawn. So that is what I will do. I'm just going to try to promote my A pawn and I'll just be moving this back and forth. And then we will be trying to go for a checkmate. So I'm just going to cover up as many squares as possible. I'm going to go for the check. This is a check and I'm immediately seeing that after this, this is a checkmate. Okay, guys, I'm very sorry that it went so fast at the end. Like I said, I got very low on time. Um, uh, as you guys saw, I gained 50 points of rating. Like I said, this is a speedrun account. It's a certified one by chess.com. So I haven't played much on this, but that is why I'm gaining so much rating. But basically what I was trying to explain at the end was that I was just trying to simplifying as much as possible. Uh, my opponent didn't have a lot of pieces left. So I just wanted to get rid of all of the pieces that could trick me with a little time and just exchange them. Now, in a way, I was constantly trying to go for checks, captures, and attacks. I mean, here I was going for a check simply because I knew that no matter where the king went, I would have a really nice fork. A uh, king went here, then maybe I could have gone for some more checks, maybe rook here, king here, maybe bringing some more, maybe even another check. I mean, this just looks really good. This and check, and all of a sudden, this almost looks like it could be a checkmate soon. I mean, this and rook b8 and am i crazy is this a checkmate i think it is it's calculating is hard and um yeah i've tried my best to explain how i would calculate in a chess game and you know i forget all the time about checks captures and attacks like i forget about it all the time and if i remembered it when i'm playing chess like i really think that i would see things clearer and I would understand my positions better because you guys saw at one point in the game, I had forgotten about it and I had a much better meal, which was to just go knight takes b2 check. And because I was just focusing on like defending my queen, I missed it. But that is why you need to always think about checks, captures, and attacks. Anyways, guys, I do hope that this video was helpful, at least in understanding, you know, my thought process. Hopefully you can bring something into your own games and hopefully you'd learn something from this video. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Once again, don't forget to like and subscribe if you did enjoy it. And have a wonderful day. See you in the next one. Also, tell me if you like this instructive sort of uh, games down in the comments down below. Whee!